One Zambia, One Nation, thank you for joining us on Zanis News. My name is Faith Katai, and the sign language interpreter is Neham Mumbi. The headlines. HH assures Muchinga development. Mwense District hands over CDF projects. Mansa Airport records increased traffic flow. Plus, Spatial Olympics hold autism pageant. Zanis News in detail. President Haga Ende Hichilema has assured the people of Muchinga province of increased development in the region. The president made the assurance when he addressed a public meeting at Moaba Primary School after joining hundreds of Chinsali residents in commemorating the KK Day at Luba Mission. Details by Henry Lumpa Jr. They turned up in numbers to see President Haga in the who came to celebrate the 100 years birthday centenary celebrations for the late Dr. Kenneth Kaunda in Chinsali district. These are residents of Chinsali during a United Party for National Development UPND rally held at Mawa Primary School grounds who cheered at the president as he addressed them on the various merits that the new Dawn administration have scored in the last two years. President Hijilema further assured the people of Mchinga province of continued development in the area. Because of our love for the people of Chinsali, the people of Mchinga, the people of Zambia, that's where we are delivering more schools, we are delivering desks there, so at Abba desk, we are employing more teachers from across the country, including from here in Chinsali, from here in Mchinga, because of our love. That is how we show love to you. We are working very hard in two years, six months, we have delivered on a lot of our commitments. The next two years and six months left, we will continue delivering for the people of Zambia. Avena Chinsali, Avena Lugwa, Avena Mpika, Avena Shwangandu, Avena Nakonde, Avena Isoka, Avena Mapinga. Bujepo Muri Avena Mapinga. Epo Muri Pano. Everyone will receive a fair share of development because Mkwai, we love you, the people of Zambia. And Mafinga member of parliament, Robert Chawinga, who is also the leader of the opposition, commended government for the positive impact of the increased constituency development fund, CDF. Earlier, President Hijelema laid wreaths at Dr. Kaunda's late parents' graveyards in Lubwa Mission. Henry Lumpa Jr., Zanis in Chinsali, Muchinga Province. In a related development, traditional leaders have been assured that government will continue to increase the Constituency Development Fund, CDF, to assist in delivering development in rural areas. Addressing traditional leaders in Muchinga province, President Haga Inde Hichilema said local authorities across the country should prioritize developmental needs that fall within the CDF parameters such as federal roads. President Hichilema also called on chiefs in the country to join in the fight against corruption by not condoning the vice in their areas. He advised the chiefs not to allow people to complain of victimization based on origin when charged with corrupt related offenses. Usually, the people involved in the, in the demarcation of these farm groups, they first benefit themselves. Then they start selling now to other people outside. Instead of them just advertising, then those people who want to invest, they apply and then they, they get those pieces of land. But it's like it's them benefiting more than the government will give to. Issue with the uh, Mupamazi Farm Block. Mupamazi Farm Block borders on three chiefs. That is Chief Mpumba, Chief Chikwanda, and Chief Mkumbo. Now, this farm block, if you check on the map, Chief Chikwanda never surrendered the land to, for, for the farm block. But Chief Mpumba gave land for farm block and the Chief Mkumbo. But when the, the surveyors from the Ministry of Agriculture were doing the mapping, they included since Chief Chwanda is at the mid, so they captured even Chief Chwanda about 84,000 hectares. So what has really happened, Chief Chwanda had already given some farms to people there. So after this, 
the easy offside from the minister was in such a captured in that land. They have gone ahead again to recommend for titles, and people are getting titles where they are people already, they are already fans. So it has brought a lot of tension between the, the local people and those families. Talked about the roads, infrastructure, very, very important, uh, but we've also capacitated the councils, your Royal Highnesses. Never before have this country ever moved money from Lusaka headquarters and taken it to the local authorities, to the constituencies, so that the constituencies and the councils can decide the priorities and manage or deliver on those priorities. Such as certain basic roads must be done by the council, because the councils have now through Constituent Development Fund have bought capacity, have, have capacitated themselves through road equipment. That's where I'm going. We should be able to do a bit more on the schools. People criticize CDF. I can assure you, we will never ever walk away from CDF because it's able to deliver certain things in your chiefdom directly by the people through their priorities. So we'll continue increasing it. Sishu, sir, I got your message. I got your message. Levy, you got the message. When a farm block is created, it's not for the officers that lands. It is for the intended people who will use the land, not to just hold on to it and sell it to the, to the Chinese. So I think they are ministers. We must pick up that matter and take it straight to cabinet. That matter must go straight to cabinet, so we have a proper review of all the farm, farm, farm blocks, who owns them, who by that we will know. Who you is an official. How do they get 5,000 hectares? They're supposed to be doing work, like Dr. Mwanga said. We Still in Mchinga province, President Hakainde Hichilema has directed the provincial administration and the local authority in Mchinga province to ensure that they provide alternative sources of energy to Kapasa Makasa University to cushion the power cuts due to load shading. President Hichilema has further promised to purchase an ambulance student bus and sink and industrial boho at the university using his own personal resources. Mwangala Kapandola reports. Mr. President, Mr. President at Kapasa Kapasa University, our immediate challenge is the lack of stationed the university ambulance. We have a university clinic that does not have full medical equipment and it only operates with minor illnesses. We have to mention that that needs clean referrals to Chisari, Chisari General Hospital, which is about 24 kilometers from the campus. Yeah. Your Excellency, having a patient ambulance will ensure to save lives of the students and the community people at large. Yeah. Your Excellency, in addition to the, to the difficulties that we are facing in transportation, yeah. we can use this student populace. They are valuable if the positive bus is unable and will never have even a quarter of the students coming. Yeah. We are also asking for you to take a look at to assist that we can have a full student bus. And get our transportation challenges going into town education to education events. This is the appeal they made through their student union president, Mapalo Chime, at Kapasa Makasa University when President Hakainde Hichilema met with them during his visit to Mchinga province. In response, President Hichilema has since directed the provincial administration and the local authority in Mchinga province to ensure they provide alternative sources of energy to the university to cushion the power cuts due to load shedding. In order to alleviate the electricity issue, the road setting you talked about. But seriously, I was whispering to the chairperson there that we can even use CDF to prioritize CDF to put solar panels on your dormitories there. Yeah. So I am here by presidential order. Yeah. Everybody see? Yeah. Everybody see? Yeah. That's to allow on the airport on the solar, so that at least you can study yes. on the solar system here. Yes. So, Vermeer, let us meet in the council there and discuss this is a priority. Let's allocate some of the money to put solar panels 
drop by drop, so that when the power is off, like the power is off, we can Because of my lack of education, yes. HH and his family yes. will buy you an ambulance. Yes. and family will buy you a student pass. In order to contribute to one of the challenges we have raised, HH and family will sink you in the industrial bubble here. The president was accompanied by cabinet ministers and some members of parliament from the opposition patriotic front, PF, who offered their counsel to the students. Because it is you, the young people. The future of this country is under the border. Yeah. So I see your students in the leader here. Yeah. It reminds us of when we were young like you. Yeah. Viva student power, Viva! So this president, because he has a heart for you, he went and grabbed that money and gave you batteries and new allowances. Imagine that Gary has come and he said, Viva Mamma Viva! Viva Mamma Viva! Viva! My name, Kamashiwa Henge, have you spoken to my brothers here? The message I just want to tell you is that let's make the most of this education we have. Believe that you colleagues are the cream of the nation. You are the intelligentsia of this nation. You represent the present and the future of this great nation. Kozanis News, Mangalaka Pandula reporting in Chinsali, Machinga province. Meanwhile, President Hagaende Hichilema has pledged to construct a 1 by 4 classroom block and a female dormitory at Luwa Secondary School in Chinsali District, as well as complete the stored maternity wing at Luwa Health Center using his family's resources. President Hichilema made the pledge after United Church of Zambia Muchinga Presbytery Bishop Festus Chulu disclosed that the mission was in urgent need of the facilities in order to improve the learning environment, especially for female pupils from far flag areas. Here is a report. History has been made today, April 28, 2024, to mark 100 years since the birth of the first president of Zambia, Kenneth Kaunda. Luba Mission Grounds, where Dr. Kaunda was born, was the hive of activities to mark the centenary celebrations, which holds a rich history in the education, political, and spiritual spheres. Former Vice President Nevas Mumba, who emanates from the area, was part of the hundreds that gathered at the celebrations, among other notable dignitaries. There is no better place to be today than in Chinsali, and even more so Luba Mission. And um, because this is really the headquarters of the initiation of the fight for the freedom of our country. At uh, the school behind me, which is Lugwa uh, Primary School, and uh, it, this is a school that uh, brought up and educated most of our political leaders from our region. The Kaundas, the Kapwepwes, the Makasas, they all went to this school. Dr. Mumba appreciated the rich history that is embedded in Luwa Mission area and had a message to the youth. I think the youth need to understand that whatever freedom we're enjoying now did not come easy. It's, 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 and that's why this is so important to, to remember the name of Dr. Kaunda so that our young people can know some people through tears, sweat and blood got the freedom that we are now enjoying today. President Kaunda was a leader who was not only a politician but also an educationalist. And when he was of age, he started his academic journey here at Lobwa Mission School, where he was educated until the 1940s. He later on followed his parents' footsteps and became a teacher at Lobwa Upper Primary School and later became the headmaster from 1943 to 1945. Fosanis News, Mwangala Kapandola, reporting in Chinsali, Muchinga Province. President Hagaende Hichlema has met traditional leaders in Nakonde district of Muchinga Province, assuring them that the government is committed to addressing their various concerns. Shortly before the meeting, President Hichilema inspected Nakonde Public Library, a facility that was constructed using Constituency Development Fund. Here is a report. 
Scores of Nakonde residents were at hand to receive President Haka and the Hichilema, who arrived in the district for a working visit. The head of state, who was aboard the presidential helicopter, touched down at Nakonde Secondary School grounds at 13.43 hours. The president took time to wave at the hundreds of residents who wanted to catch a glimpse of the head of state. Shortly after arrival, the president inspected Nakonde Public Library, a facility that was constructed using the Constituency Development Fund, CDF. The president then proceeded to pay a courtesy call on chiefs in the district. Is it a proposal that is your government is agreeing on the table that you look at the area as well of water so that you consider winter beds production? It's a whole term of this area, it has a lot of water bodies. If that was implemented, for sure we shall contribute to that. But the appeal there is if the government is implemented, the net investment be Agriculture is important. The people here work hard. The farming people, like many others in the country. There's more rain here, I agree with you. Want to support, yes, irrigation, so that we can produce at least two crops a year. Not just waiting for the rains, but even in the dry season. As we were flying here, there was a lot of water I was seeing down there. And I was asking the minister, which area is this, which place? I'm very inquisitive myself. I want to know. Mtalakani for Zanis News in Nakonde, Muchinga province. A renowned visual artist, Chande Kapundu, has decided to honor Zambia's founding father, Kenneth Kaunda, with another art masterpiece that encompasses the various social and political attributes of the late president. Mr. Kapundu is famous for the Kenneth Kaunda statue placed at Lusaka's Long Acres Mall. More in this report. Chande Kapundu, the mind behind the famous KK statue at Lusaka's Long Acres Mall, has once again designed another KK masterpiece to commemorate the country's founding father's 100 year centenary celebration. Mr. Kapundu explained that the six meter masterpiece is set to showcase the various aspects of KK's social and political life. I took it upon myself uh, two years ago that when Kaunda will be celebrating Dr. Kaunda's 100 year birthday, I should come up with a design to commemorate the 100th birthday of Dr. Kaunda. And this design only to encompass all the values and the, of Dr. Kaunda. So I came up with a design which to me summarizes Dr. Kaunda. In my design, uh, I put the political side of Dr. Kaunda, artistically, and then the the social side of Dr. Kaunda. The renowned artist explains that the idea behind the second statue is to enlighten young people on the passions of the late First Republican President, Kenneth Kaunda. There's that also aspect which a lot of our young men now are not aware of, the main social side of Dr. Kaunda. So I wanted to bring that. Kaunda was a very sociable person, very easy to approach. And uh, for us who grew up in the Kaunda days, we know of KK11. So I wanted to bring that aspect into the statue. Some people, especially the young ones, don't know that Kaunda at some point used to do refereeing in some of the football matches. So I've shown that here in this miniature sculpture here where Dr. Kaunda is kicking a ball and to represent his love for football and the KK11. He has since asked for sponsorship from individuals and companies to assist with the purchase of required materials. The plan for this statue is that now that it has been unveiled to the public, construction will begin in the immediate uh, future and construction will take about five months to the end of September, meaning that this statue must be ready for public unveiling on 24th of October when we are commemorating our 60th anniversary, which gives me about five months of, of, of work. The total height, I would love it to be more than six meters funds being available because we need to bring out the world statesmanship, the iconic leadership of Dr. Kaunda, and I feel we need a gigantic uh, statue to do that. First, 
because of the materials involved, it will be cast in bronze, because bronze is long lasting, it will withstand all the elements of the weather. It can go up to a thousand years. So, uh, looking at uh, that element, the budget cost of the statue is about 10 million kwacha, and in dollars, around 400,000 dollars. Because most of the materials are imported, hence the cost is related to what the dollar is. Mr. Kapundu hopes to complete the statue which will be placed at the Freedom Park in Kamwala in the next five months in time for Zambia's 60th independence celebrations this year. Sarah Miti for Zanis and Losaka. We take a break still ahead in the news. Stay tuned. Zanis TV presents Chayangoma on your people's channel every Fridays at 19 hours. Chayangoma is a traditional musical program that teaches Zambians norms and culture through song and dance. Watch Zanis TV on Topstar Channel, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. Don't miss. How I Made It is a program that delves into the many success stories of different people from all walks of life. Watch How I Made It on Zanis TV every Thursday at 18.30 hours on the Topster Channel, Channel 6 DTT and Channel 458 DTH. Welcome back. You are watching Zanis News. We now take you to Luapula province. Provincial Permanent Secretary Mighty Mumba has handed over completed CDF projects in Mwense constituency with an assurance of undertaking more projects. Lewis Changwe has more in the following report. A first ever one by two science laboratory constructed using the Constituents Development Fund, CDF, at Kawama Secondary School in Mwense District has been commissioned. Wapura Province Permanent Secretary Mighty Mumba, who commissioned the science lab, also handed over a modern ablution block and water scheme at Kapamba Secondary School and is based over 2 million 300,000 kwacha grants to 104 beneficiaries. We are handing over this uh, one by two science uh, laboratory at Kawama Primary School at a total cost of 950,000 kwacha a total of 2,303,000 kwacha has been disbursed in grants benefiting 104 groups. The government has sponsored 222 students in Mwense alone for various skills training programs at a total cost of 3,800,656 kwacha. We are proud to announce that 333 pupils have been sponsored for boarding secondary school bursaries in Mwense at a total cost of 1,068,000 kwacha. Deputy Council Chairperson Enes Chiwaya and District Commissioner Happy Stone Mwape were also present at the handover ceremony. To the beneficiaries, I urge each and every you to put this fund to good use in investing them wisely in our respective projects and the initiatives. To the beneficiaries of this CDF grant, use them wisely, implement your projects diligently. The gesture has dried a chieftain's Lukwesa, who has since implored the school management to guard the infrastructure generously. Lewis Changwe, Zanis Mwense, Luapra Province. In agriculture news, Permanent Secretary for Special Duties at Cabinet Office, Patrick Mucheleka, has appealed to farmers in Senga Hill District to sell their produce to the Food Reserve Agency in Senga Hill District to help secure the country's food security. Mr. Mucheleka made the appeal when he addressed heads of government departments. More in the following report by Namusokwe Wembia. The demand for white maize cannot be overemphasized and this can be seen in the way the commodity is selling, like hot cake. But farmers in Senga Hill District have been reminded not to be tempted by the high prices being offered by buyers. 
mostly foreigners who have invaded the area. Because of their obligation to support government through the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, secure the grain for National Strategic Food Reserve. Farmers have already sold their produce uh, because uh, the briefcase buyers were offering quite a good price according to them. We, we have received reports where uh, farmers have sold. Uh, they, they receive money so that when they harvest, they will keep uh, funds. And Permanent Secretary for Special Duties at Cabinet Office, Patrick Ncheleka, who visited Senga Hill District, encouraged farmers to sell their produce to FRA. Senga District can contribute to national food security. We have seven provinces that have had a severe drought resulting in massive crop failure. And we are looking up to these three provinces where we, we have experienced good rains. And of course, Senga District contributing its part in ensuring that the nation is food secure. Senga Hill District Administration has pledged to work with security wings to secure the maize in the area. Administration will ensure that working hand in hand with all the stakeholders to protect our maize, which we are supposed even to take to the needy provinces, those which are affected by, by the unfavorable climate. And in terms of national disaster PS. Reporting for Zanis in Senga Hill, Namsokwe Wembia. Still in agriculture news, in an effort to secure food at family and national level, some farmers have switched to planting winter maize by using water from shallow wells. Jubel Zulu talked to some farmers and now reports. Earlier last month, President Haga in the Hichilema declared the prolonged dry spell in the country as a national disaster and emergency. This led to a directive that government embarks on irrigation as farmers are urged to plant early maturing maize and winter maize. Some farmers have started to implement winter planting of maize. Yeah, so around here, as you can see, this is a, a dumbo. And uh, the other side, we have planted winter maize. We just planted it about, uh, about two weeks ago. And this was planted at the ordinary time. And what we have done here, the other side we were talking about uh, hybrid seed made by the seed companies. But here, it's just my idea that just for the sake of preserving the traditional seed, the maize you are seeing here is local maize. And this is the variety of the local maize. Locally here, it's known as bongololo. Bongololo is a milliped, yeah? chongololo. So it's known as bongololo because of the multi colors. For the seed company, they will ensure that it is available. Also, we have started early selling these products. So as we speak now, uh, previously we used to start selling our, our maize hybrids in August, going all the way to January. But this time around, we have continued selling these products, which means that starting now until December or January, at every point a farmer will want to get these products, they will be readily available. The workers are happy to work on the farm. Jubel Zulu, so, uh, Zanis, panipa, panipa so this is a district, Eastern Province. So, the news continues. Authorities in Mansa district have revealed that Mansa Airport is recording at least 8,000 passengers passing through the facility annually. 
The increase in traffic has encouraged the government to expand the runway to 1.7 kilometers to accommodate bigger planes. Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Henry Kapata has toured the airport to appreciate the works. More in the following report. Ministry of Information and Media Director Spokesperson Henry Kapata has continued his tour of capital projects in Wapla province. Mr. Kapata has toured Mansa Airport to check on the project to expand the runway at the airport of 1.7 kilometers that will make the runway reach 3 kilometers. Government believes there's a lot happening here in Wapula province and obviously government is extremely impressed that uh, issues to do with the infrastructure development such as this one, the Mansa Airport, where we believe that uh, it will make a lot of value with regards to the expansion of this airport because of several economic activities that are happening in the province. As government, we are determined uh, to bring all what is required to the province so that we attract investment. There is a lot. We can talk about Wapula. We have Sampia, we have, we have some tours coming almost on a weekly basis. We are also happy that ProFlight have put up daily flights to Wapula province. That in itself suggests that uh, Wapula province is the place to be. Mansa Airport's manager Davis Kamalata says the expansion of the runway will ensure the airport to accommodate bigger planes to cater for increased number of passengers. We do have a stretch of 1.7 kilometers runway mm -hmm. and this runway is not longer enough to accommodate bigger planes like the Boeing 777. So now in the new expansion program we want to make it a 3, point, uh, three kilometer stretch uh, which is, should be able to accommodate bigger planes and what that means is that uh, if that runway is closer to the offices government has plans to actually take it a little bit further from here so that uh, when it's further from here and it's elongated it should be able to accommodate bigger planes without disturbing the current infrastructure that is in here and passengers coming from different countries are happy with the development. We're happy to say that we're exploring more work in the Lopula province and around Mansa, including the Goena farm block. So it's great to see this expansion. It's really going to open things up for agriculture. This is a wonderful area for agricultural work. Uh, farms of all sizes, more processing, very close to DRC. So we see a lot of opportunity here and we think others will as well. Betre Bakatebe reporting for Zanis News in Mansa District in Wapla Province. You are still watching Zanis News. Special Olympics Zambia Board Chairperson Mazianga Liwewe has stressed the urgent need to reshape the narrative surrounding the autism spectrum disorders. Dr. Liwewe observed that society has continued to unjustly misunderstand, stigmatize and overlook individuals with autism. She was speaking during the pageant crowning in Lusaka for Mr. and Miss Autism. Wupe Sendwe reports. <laughs> It was an afternoon filled with dance, laughter and entertainment as children showcased their talent and passion at the Mulungoshi International Conference Center in Lusaka. This was during the first ever Mr. and Miss Autism Zambia Talent Show organized by the Center for Persons with Disabilities aimed at promoting the various talents that children with autism have. Center for Persons with Disabilities Board Chairperson said the event provided an opportunity to help children with autism and other disabilities show the world their capabilities. So many parents have got children and they don't bring them around to the public because they feel a certain disability and therefore keeping a child indoors is the best they can do. But we've come here to showcase what children with disabilities can do. So you can only do early intervention if you know about the condition. And uh, the, the standard is that, the best practice is that it has to be identified at least five years or younger. So if you can identify it early and you start therapy, you find that the child has got better chances of living an independent life. An autism advocate who is also autistic say the event will remind society to appreciate people with autism. The idea is that we have long chosen to see that autistic people 
need uh, to be included into society, to be helped and everything, but we have also forgotten to appreciate them. In the beginning, it was quite tough. I didn't know what was going to be the outcome of her condition. But over the years that I've been with her, watching her grow, develop, slowly but sure, making the progress every single day, it has really been a delight. Special Olympics Zambia board chairperson officiated at the event. It's an event that is driven by a myriad of motivations, chief among them the urgent need to reshape the narrative surrounding autism spectrum disorders. We gather not just to admire the outward beauty, but also to elevate the voices and talents of those often marginalized, challenging stereotypes and dismantling barriers that hinder their full integration into society. On April 2, 2024, Zambia joined the world in commemorating Autism Day and the month of April is dedicated to autism awareness. Wopesen Dufosanis in Osaka. In other news, the government has stressed the importance of working with the traditional establishment in mitigating the effects of climate change. Speaking when he graced this year's Luambi Chiftom Komboka ceremony for Nalolo and Senanga districts, Minister of Green Economy and Environment Colin Zovu says the Barese Rural Establishment, BRE, is a better place in the fight against global warming as it already has powerful administrative structures. More in this report. This year, the Komboka ceremony for Chieftain Esimbuyu Imwiko of Luambi Chief Dome, consisting of Nalolo and Senanga districts, has been held in a different style due to the negative effects of climate change. Chieftain Esimbuyu Imwiko's royal badge has this year not docked at the usual Riwabele Rohaba in Moyo Royal Village, but instead docked at Rioro Harbour in Mkukutu area due to raw water levels that have been caused by drought. Minister of Green Economy and Environment, Koin Zovu, was guest of honor at the 2024 Luambi Chief Dom Komboka ceremony. This also gave us an opportunity to discuss with the traditional leadership here issues of drought, issues of climate change. I'm sure you are aware that uh, the theme for this year for the Komboka is cultural heritage, building resilience to climate change. I think this is very, very important. Remember, we, we landed way before this harbor. And between the main point of landing and the harbor here is dry land. We're driving in a plane. That also explains very, very clearly the negative of climate change. Luambi Chief Dom Secretary Induna Ikakena reiterated the significance of upholding tradition. Uh, tradition is very important because traditional leaders are the custodians of the land. So it has to be promoted in such a way that it, yes, it even brings money to the country through tourism. You know, culture is the, uh, the initial stage of life. Or the village headman, the community starts from the village. So it needs to be supported. For a country to be called a country, it needs people. And those people are coming from the villages, from different chiefdoms. Western Province Minister Kapelwambangweta called for strategies to mitigate climate change. If we, this global warming is going to continue at the rate it has, it means then we have to revisit uh, the way people live uh, within the communities. Of course, from the government point of view, this is why the government is encouraging people now in the whole, the whole country that from now onwards we should avoid the burning our fields, burning forests, and burning uh, plains. Luambi Chief Dom Komboka ceremony is held a week after the one for the Litunga Lubosi Imwiko II, ending with the Nenkuyu Chief Dom Komboka of Kalabo and Senanga District, Sifwe Mangala, Zanis, in Alolo District, Western Province. Finally, in the news, the Aglian Singers, Ministry of the Seventh Day Adventist Church from Southern Zambia Union Conference, has donated materials to five first hospitals worth 30 million kwacha in the Saka district. 
receiving the donation on behalf of the government at Kanyama Level 1 Hospital, Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu commended the Ministry for the Guest Trial. Justin Piri now reports. The Seventh-day Adventist Church through the Aglian Singers Ministry of the Southern Zambia Union Conference has donated 250 chickens to all the five Level 1 hospitals in Lusaka District worth 30,000 kwacha. In supplementing this donation, the Muslim Social and Welfare Trust has also donated assorted foodstuffs, including 20 by 12.5 kilograms of milli meal, 6 by 5 liters cooking oil, 3 by 2 kilograms salt, 2 by 25 kilograms bag of rice, 2 by 10 kilograms sugar, and 3 cases of fruit top juice. Here at Kanyama Level 1 Hospital, as the Seventh day Adventist Church in Lusaka Conference, through the Ministry of the Aglen Singers, we are here to make a donation, uh, a selfless service which we believe that will contribute towards the uh, taking care of the people who may be passing through uh, certain challenges. Lusaka District Commissioner Rosa Zulu received the donation on behalf of the government. I am proud to stand here to receive 250 chickens valued at 30,000 kwacha. This donation which is coming from proceeds of the Agilent Singers Ministry Poultry Business will go towards food for the patients in the five level one hospitals which are Kanyama, Matero, Chawama, Chipata and Chilenje. Lusaka District Health Office appreciated the gesture held under the theme, Reaching Out Together. We are grateful that you've given us these uh, donations. This will go a long way. It's very encouraging, actually. Uh, we are grateful for your support, and uh, we hope that this support continues. The district commissioner is calling on other stakeholders to partner with the government in this noble cause. Justin Perry reporting for Zanis in Lusaka. That item concludes Zanis News, but before we go, a reminder of the top stories. HH assures Muchinga development. Mwense district hands over CDF projects. Mansa Airport records increased traffic flow. Plus Spatial Olympics holds autism pageant. That's all we had for you on Zanis News. On behalf of the entire Zanis production team, this has been Faith Katai. And my sign language interpreter has been Neham Mumbi. Thank you for watching.